Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, we are going to continue with this logistic regression example in Excel. We were at the point where we will determine the cutoff. A uh, typical cutoff is 0.5, so 50%. If the probability of a heart failure is uh, less than 50%, then we are going to assume that it is going to be a zero, no heart failure, more than 50%, we are going to assume that it is one, a heart failure. So we will just say, take it here, if the heart failure is greater than 0.5, then it is one, otherwise it's zero. Okay, so that's this predicted classification. And once we find this, and I'm going to just name this range, and I will call this as predicted. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back to here, the heart disease, and highlight them, control shift and down arrow, selects everything, and then actual, done. So I have the heart disease and I have the predicted ones, and I'll try to go fast. You, if you want, you could just maybe slow me down to 0.75 speed, okay. So what is the now the correct classification of zero zeros? And uh, we could just use the count ifs there. And the criteria range one is this with the, the log on the column. And then the, so that's gonna be next one. Uh, this is the, the actual and then equals zero, the comma, then this is the predicted, predicted equals zero, and then put a dollar sign in front of rows, in front of columns, in front of rows. Why? Because this, we want that to be three on columns, not on rows, three on rows, not on columns. And that's about it. 140 correct prediction hooray so you have to just you know uh, celebrate this and 20 incorrect and 25 incorrect again 112 correct so what is the total the total is actual there are 160 patients do not have heart disease. 137 patients, heart disease. So ignore, do not look at this part. Zero, 160, 147. Now, what is the total here? 165 predicted to not have a heart disease. And 133, not, I think that's a mistake. 132 and 165 okay and the total is 297 so there are 297 patients what is the what is the accuracy here in this model we will just assume that this is our training model we will just build a model here and then assuming that there is another set of data where we could just apply this model and see if our model also functions well on a new set of data okay so in this case let's try to understand how accurate we are let's try to understand this matrix which is called a confusion matrix if you are confused you are not alone all of us are confused about this confusion matrix now the accuracy is we are accurate in this part and we are accurate in this part so we were able to find this two correctly out of 297. So the accuracy is 140, open a parenthesis, this one plus this one divided by the total. So it's 84.8% accuracy here, 85%. And the precision, how precise are we? Now, at the end, we said that these 132 patients, you guys are, do you guys have heart disease, correct? And they say 111 of them said, yes, sir, we have heart disease. And then 20 of them said, no, you missed it. We don't have heart disease. 
so in that case the precision is there's one twelve that we correctly identified out of the ones that we thought that they would have the heart disease okay so in that case that number is 112 divided by 132 and that is again another ladies and gentlemen another 84.8 percent okay so this is that and this is 112 out of 132 okay so this is just a coincidence they are not supposed to be equal to each other so it doesn't mean anything here okay so the recall now I want to look at the recall and what is recall first of all it rhymes uh, recall is <clears throat> there are how many there are how many 137 there are 137 patients with heart disease at the end and we were able to identify 112 of them as patients with heart disease so that kind of indicates that how good are we in terms of finding out those people with heart disease like if you are a judge what is the you know how many times you are able to correctly identify the cor the the correct criminals and if you are trying to find out the fraudsters and how many times you are able to find those correctly <clears throat> and these are the things that you are seeing here this is going to be what this is 112 divided by 137 so out of this 137 actually are having heart disease 112 of them were we were able to find those <clears throat> and this is 81 point seven percent and this decrease the accuracy okay so sometimes they have different names I'm just gonna use the recall sometimes recall is called a sensitivity etc but you can take a look at all those details yourself but we were able to find this accuracy precision and recall and now one, one question is this a good cutoff point is 0.5 a good place to cut off and how can we find it out let's try to see which one that we care about the most do we care about the accuracy recall or precision and uh, if you increase one of them another one may suffer that's the thing here so let's try to see the relationship between them and sometimes you don't care about the accuracy because if you have only let's say 10 fraudsters out of 1000 people and you're and if you're able to kind of identify a lot of non fraudsters but not able to identify those fraudsters then you have a trouble so accuracy is going to be high but the recall is not going to be high for you so how can we find for different cutoff scores what is going to be the accuracy precision and recall values here there is a new Excel feature that you some of you may learn instead of just trying all those cutoffs and putting those values in here we will just refer at the top of this table refer to the cells accuracy precision and recall then we will just magically make them disappear how by just making them white color okay so there's they have to be there if you want you can just keep them there but it's better not to see them and then we highlight this table with not highlighting the titles we go to data what if analysis Bill Gates thought of you data table and then we are doing a sensitivity on cutoffs we are changing the cutoffs in in column AD and this is a column input and we look at they are a representative of this cutoff value okay q1 now what's going to happen is excel will try those in here automatically and just put the cutoff values of these and then find this accuracy precision and recall values and put them here okay so what is happening the numbers are equal 
Do we make any mistake? Yes, we just put 0.5. So this is the thing. If I just put 0.5 here, this formula has nothing to do with that cutoff. It's just the number, right? So when we change that, it's not going to affect. So we have to refer, not just type that. And that is Q1, just put a dollar sign on it, and then double click. It's the same formula, but now Excel can change this behind the scenes. And as you can see here, the numbers are different. Okay, so let's try to see how these values change. Insert a scatter chart. Okay, so that's it. Instead of just put, putting one here because it's not the precision just goes to zero with zero, I think, make this 0.9. Okay, good. So the accuracy increases when we increase this, but then it doesn't increase after 0.4. The accuracy this is the largest then it stays the same then goes down there's no benefit for us to increase the alpha to increase accuracy up to only up to 0.4 precision increases but in expense of what recall recall decreases but we may have to decrease the recall because what if we just say hey make the alpha zero if I just make the alpha zero What's going to happen is, let's take a look at this table, make the alpha zero, and all of them are, we are going to predict them, all of them as, hey, all 297, you are going to have heart disease. Then uh, 160 of them would not really have heart disease, but we will just label them as with people with heart disease, which is not a good thing. This is like, sometimes you use it, if there's a chance of someone having COVID-19, then you are going to just say that, hey, I'm going to treat you that you have COVID-19. Assume that you have COVID-19. Maybe in that case, you may want to maximize your recall, but not in this case. So it's okay for us to suffer a little bit of recall, and then we could increase this, what? The accuracy and precision. So I think here 0.4 is a good value. So I'm going to just change this alpha to 0 0.4 and let's look at, take a look at this we are 85.2 percent accurate 83 percent precise 85 percent is the recall in this case and this is going to be a little longer video than the other but let's just finish this now we have tp and fp does anyone know what these are tp it's true positive so which ones are the true positive values? They are, we assume that they are heart disease and they are actually heart disease. This is the true positive, 119, okay? But what's the rate of that true positive? We, this true positive is out of 119, out of, we have also false negatives here, 20. So we are going to have 119 divided by 137. That is going to be uh, given as the, the true positive rate. So let's just calculate them here. TP rate. And the TP rate is the same thing as the recall in this case, 117 divided by 137. That's my true positive rate and I'm going to look at the false positive rates. False positive rate. And <clears throat> what is the, the number of false positives? We have 24. We said that there are uh, heart disease patients, but they are not. So that's the false positive out of the total. And here, this is 160. So this is the false positive rate, and these are the zeros, and we thought that 15% of them uh, incorrectly we identified them as people with, no heart, uh, with heart disease, even though they did not have heart disease. So we'll just create this chart again, the true positive rate, 
and then the false positive rate. And we want to see the relationship between the two. Highlight these, go to data, and then what if data table, column input, again what? Alpha. Um, yeah, the cutoff. Okay. So here it is the cutoffs and then the true positive, false positive rates. Let's create one more chart. Insert, scatter chart. And we don't want to do it like this. We just want to highlight the true positive, false positives, and then these numbers. Ignore the cutoff, just the relation between true positive and false positive. Okay, so we'll just create a scatter chart. And now I want to put the exchange them. I want to refer this to the, I want to make this false positive and make this true positive. Just change their places, false positive, and then make this true positive. There is something that I want to do because I want to put the false positives on the x-axis, that's why. Control and select these, and then insert a scatter chart. Here it is. And what is this called? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Okay, uh, so this is what? RSC curve. So here, the RSC curve is just showing us the relationship between the, let's just make this, this is what? This is the false positive rate, and this is the true positive rate. So what's happening here is we uh, when alpha goes up we are seeing an increase in the true positive rate but that increase stops after a point and it just goes in like horizontally and your false positive rates increases rapidly while you are not really gaining a lot from the true positive rates so usually what you want to do is you want to stop somewhere here so which is what like when your speed declines and you are not really getting a lot of advantage over by just increasing the in the expense of increasing the false positive rate so here what we are seeing is maybe 125.81 right 125.81 this is 0.5 and what is this 0 0.075, uh, 0 0.7, and what is this? This is this 0.4. So we kind of stop here. We made it like a little bit more increase in the true positive in the expense of the false positive rate. But somewhere in this range, we could say, hey, let's just take it and use our alpha to be like that. Now the next job is to apply to this to a test set. And if it still functions well, that means the model is reliable, then we will we can just take a patient. And I don't think that maybe you know there may be some ethical considerations, so we are not really looking at those right now, just as a model. And we will just get the age, gender, and everything. I will say the chance of a heart disease is this much. So it has it is going to be the same for financial decisions, health decisions, anything that you would think of, and maybe the decisions in criminal courts, but you always need to think that there may be some ethical things that you always need to consider, not just the built model using uh, any of your uh, classification model or algorithm. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, let me know uh, in the comments. Bye for now.